Everyone in this room, I promise you, has done this at least once in your life. You place people according to class and according to labels that God refuses to use. So Peter has to learn that if I'm going to start seeing people the way that Jesus sees people, I can't show partiality anymore. I have to start looking at people the way that God does. Partiality, in case there are some young ones who are like, what does partiality mean? It's very simple. It means showing favor to something. Like, for example, if I said I favor coffee over Coke. That's partiality. And when you apply it to people, it can get pretty dangerous. Here's what people do. People say, I show partiality to this group because I think this group is good and this group is bad. Or I show partiality to this group because I think this group is more righteous and this group more unrighteous. Or I show partiality to this group because I think this group is set apart, different. Or we'll use the word the Bible uses. I think this group is holy. And this other group is unholy. On the basis of skin color, the blood running through their veins. That's what partiality is. And Peter needed to learn the lesson that God doesn't show partiality. If we were to Americanize this story, here's how we'd tell it. You ready for this? We'd tell it like this. Cornelius sent for Peter. Cornelius the good guy. The virtuous, moral guy. And Peter came into the house and he said, Okay, Cornelius, listen. God sent me to proclaim a message to you. And I'm here to tell you, congratulations, you have favor with God because you're such a good guy, because you tithe when you come to church. Congratulations. God is very pleased with you. Keep up the good work, and you'll have another performance review in six months. Well done, Cornelius. Because we in America, we think that God grades people based on their merit. And if you're good with God today, good for you. Keep it up. If you're not good tomorrow, he's going to be mad at you. And you lose the label good guy. And you got to work hard to make sure you get that label back. That's the way that many people think and picture God. That he judges people based on merit. The lesson from Cornelius is that God doesn't use the label good guy or bad guy. The way that we do. Paul makes this the highlight of his ministry. When he opens up the greatest letter ever written, Paul using God's label, slaps the same label on every person that's ever lived. The same label. Here it is. He opens up Romans like this. Well then, should we conclude that we Jews, you know, the law keepers, that we Jews are better than others? No, not at all. For we've already shown that all people, whether Jews or Gentiles, are under the power of sin. As it is written, pay close attention, church, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good. Say these last three words, not even one. Do you believe that? Now you might say, that's Paul writing that. Jesus never said anything like that. <clears throat> I beg to differ. Guess who Paul got it from? Look what Jesus said. Jesus said, no one is good except God alone. So you say, but I'm good. Not according to his standard. So if you want to be labeled as good in the sight of God, there's only one way. And if you just read on the next few verses, Paul tells you how you can achieve that label. Is anyone interested? Yes, Here it is. And this righteousness from God, that means the label of righteous that comes from God, comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. So because Jesus was actually good, we can have His goodness given to us through our faith in Him. There is no distinction. That means this is as good for Cornelius as it is for Peter. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified, that means made right in the sight of God, freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. I'm here to tell you, God 
does show partiality. He does show favoritism, and it's only to his son. God favors Jesus. And if you, oh, listen to this. If you would like God to label you like this, just as good as God's only begotten son, you can have that label by being united with Jesus through faith. That's the message of our gospel. That when you die, God will not see your sin. As long as you're united by faith with his son, he will declare you good. Is that not good news? That's great news. That's great news. So the first lesson that Peter had to learn about the way that we see people is to stop showing favor to people that we think are good and to start seeing people the way that God sees them. There is none good but God. That levels the playing field, does it not? We ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Yet we know that a person is not justified. You want to stand before God and have him say not guilty? That's what justified means. We know that a person is not justified by works of the law. You can't work your way up to this but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by our works of the law. Because by the works of the law, no one will be justified. You can't earn this. And it takes a lot of people time after time after time to learn this lesson. God sent this vision to Peter the religious rule keeper as a way of saying, Peter, 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 my son did for you what you're unable to do for yourself. And I'm sending you to the world to make him look great. But you will not make him look great as long as you're trying to keep the rules to make yourself look better in my sight. That's what he's saying to Peter. The lesson that Peter learned is that being righteous, listen to this, everybody. Being righteous isn't about religion because religion is about what I must do for God to be counted righteous. But God is about counting you righteous before you've earned anything. God makes you righteous because of what His Son has done for you. This is what makes Jesus worthy of our worship, wouldn't you say? And why God shows no partiality toward anyone who is a religious rule keeper. And so, to all the religious rule keepers who think that God likes you better than your husband or your wife, because you keep the rules and they don't, I'm here to tell you on the authority of God's word that God can forgive you of your prideful religiosity. Yes, you who always play by the book, God can forgive you of your pride if you just cry out to him for help. For Peter, who was a Jew, He was taught and raised to believe that there were certain foods that were unclean, certain holidays that were unclean, certain days of the week that were unclean. You can do these things and have fellowship with these things on these certain days, stay away from these foods, and then you can do these things, but only on certain days and only the way that I prescribe it. Well, Peter was raised to believe that those things were final when God said, no, those are only shadows of what was going to come when my son was born on the earth. And so Peter could not get it out of his mind that there are some people who are clean and some people who are unclean. My people are clean, because we're the Jews, and everyone else is unclean. And so God had to show him that because of Jesus and the blood that he shed on the cross, everybody can be declared clean. Everyone, because of Jesus. Hey friends, Pastor Luke just wanted to take a quick second to say thank you for watching the video. If you found it to be edifying and encouraging, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. For more videos and sermons like this or to watch the full-length sermon, you can find it right here on our YouTube channel or by visiting our website, www.hopeoflbi.com.